Hi guys, Chris De Santiago from Low Kick MMA here with UFC light heavyweight Alonzo Menafield. Alonzo, how are you doing today? It's going pretty good. Uh, just got back from a training uh, session and uh, I'm a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. And uh, you know, before we get into your next big fights, um, I want to ask uh, like, how did your holiday season go? Oh, um, I celebrated New Year's and that was pretty good with my wife and uh, and, uh, and the children. Uh, besides that, I mean, pretty much, I guess, okay. But I don't really celebrate holidays. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And you know, like with uh, your next fight being February 27th, uh, great, like it's a great fight by the matchmakers, by the way. You know, you guys are both heading in there as prolific finishers. Uh, you guys have actually, only went to decision once in your career. Uh, do you think this fight goes a distance, or do you think do you like predict the early knockout in this one? I mean, I don't know. Given the nature, I, I wouldn't want it to go or go early. Um, I, I noticed that the dude said something on Instagram saying, uh, uh, "Don't blink." So I I I, I take that in a full offense. So uh, I'll be gunning and take him out in the first round. If it happens, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm ready to go three-round war. Gotcha. And, like, you know, William Knight, like, what do you think of him as an opponent? Like, have you, like, um, with his fights, like, is there anything that you could, like, pick apart from his uh, fight tape? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a lot to pick apart. Um, you know, he, he's up and coming. And uh, with that said, you know, I, I see a lot of a lot of openings or whatnot. Uh, but, you know, overall, I think it's a great matchup. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. And is this fight going to be at the UFC Apex? Or, like, do you know where the location is going to be? No, I, I don't know. You know, given Abu Dhabi, I would love to fight there now. They got crowds and whatnot. So it'll be depressing if we were at Apex. Um, <laughs> so... But I don't know. Uh, it's to be announced. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, you know, 2020 was a rough year on all of us, you know, like with the pandemic and all of the, the stuff going on. You know, like what can you say about your 2020? Like what, what can you reflect on last year? Uh, 2020, I, I guess overall, you know, it's just – was a down year for me, uh, but given my whole life, it is what it is. You know, I keep going and uh, keep looking forward. And uh, yeah, I I'm definitely ready to put on a show 221. I got all my avenues as far as training and skill wise, and I I'm ready to perform, you know, and show the fans why, you know, I was a top highly touted individual and prove that, you know, not for them, but just for myself. So I'm excited. Gotcha. And, you know, the UFC, um, they made a fight, you know, for you with OSP. You know, OSP is one of the, the veterans of the light heavyweight division, a very respected name. Unfortunately, you didn't get the win, but what did you take most out of that loss? Like, and, um, like, how much is it going to help you moving forward? Um, well, you know, given that, you know, I, I look at that as a, a great learning experience uh going into that thinking you know when i when i pick a fight or go into a fight i have to make sure that i pick my cues and uh make sure i you know do my corrections and don't be reckless so uh with that said you know i've, I've basically learned how to not be reckless mm -hmm. and uh basically be a complete fighter so that that fight screamed to me to become a, a complete fighter and that's what i been training to, to be mm -hmm. complete. Gotcha. And, you know, I heard uh, some news was around, uh, you know, UF, uh, former UFC fighter Corey Anderson, he actually put out a statement that uh, Bellator has a better lightweight, uh, light heavyweight division than the UFC right now. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Would you agree, would you agree with that? No, no, I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, I, I don't. I don't, I don't, I think they have a good division, but I don't think it's the best. Um, there, there's great fighters in, you know, all kinds of promotions uh, as far as light heavyweight. But um, 
I wish they all would be in one division, but it is what it is. So, but I mean, yeah, they're everywhere. You know, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they signed Duo Romero, um, Corey Anderson recently, um, Anthony Rumble Johnson. They have uh, the champ of Adin Nemkov, Brian Bader. Uh, who do you think is the best in belts for his light heavyweight division right now? Oh, um, I wouldn't know, man. Uh, I really wouldn't know. I know Rumble is exciting. Yeah. So uh, I like excitement over whatever else they got to offer. But I mean, I don't know. <laughs> good, good for them. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, looking at the 205 right now, you know, like it's, it's a pretty good weight class right now. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of names in that division. Is there any like fights that you look at where it's like, man, it would be like a dream to fight them. Like, do you have any dream fights that you want to make in the future? Uh, dream fights. No, no, not, not really. Uh, I, I like to fight everyone uh, and gain all of that uh, experience and getting those main event cards and whatnot. So I, I'm pretty much game for, you know, everyone. Uh, I don't really have a particular name, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to fighting, you know, the best. Mm -hmm. And going away from the names that you want to fight and going to the names that you train with, like, who are some people that you train with and uh, what, what gym are you currently at for this camp? Uh, well, I've been hitting sacks and gingera, uh, my, my old school roots and my Muay Thai art. Uh, and I've been going with, you know, Chitty and my old training partner from there. But mostly I've been at Fortis MMA. And, uh, you know, I train with Ryan, uh, Span, uh, Kennedy. Uh, I can't say his last name. He's Nigerian. <laughs> and, uh, Uriah Hall. We, we, I, I train with uh, Zumar, you know, a, a lot. Uh, I guess uh, people in my weight class. Yeah, if I'm forgetting anyone, I'm I'm sorry. But yeah, everyone at Fortis MMA. Awesome. So uh, you're actually in Dallas right now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Dallas. Awesome. Dallas area. Yeah, I, I live one hour uh, north of Dallas. Uh, but uh, what what are some of your favorite places to head up in Dallas? Uh, any place that has food. Uh, <laughs> <I don't, laughs> Always a good place. I don't. Right. Uh, yeah. Food. Uh, um, uh, like uh, the garden, the mechanical garden place with my wife, cause she likes it. Mm -hmm. Besides that, I, I'm in I'm in Plano. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And I think one of your teammates, Jeff Neal, I think he's a waiter at uh, I believe it's Texas Roadhouse. Have you actually been there uh, while he was like waiting a table? No, no, I've never been there while he was waiting a table. But I, I love Texas Roadhouse and them, and it was biscuits. <laughs> but never been when Jeff was working. <laughs> gotcha. And did you guys, did you grow up in Texas or like uh, did you like move in a couple of years ago? No, nah, I'm from California, um, and I, I moved I moved here to go to college mm -hmm. back in 2008. So and I've been here ever since. I had a boy or a son, and I, I stayed here. Mm -hmm. What what can you say about your college days and um, what what degree were you uh, pursuing at the time? Uh, I was pursuing a business administration. Uh, then I switched and went to criminal justice, and then um, I, I went to arena and then basically came back, finished up, got my degree, and did nothing with the police, uh, I guess, force. And uh, I started working as a bouncer. And then I started training to fight. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. It, you know, it's a, obviously a, a great degree. I was actually pursuing that, uh, but that's kind of off topic. Uh, but uh, I want to go into your, like, um, nickname, uh, Mr. Uh, – I mean, not Mr. Atomic, just Atomic. Um, you know, obviously that nickname was came from your you know, the power in your hands, uh, but who actually uh, gave you that, that nickname? Well, I mean – a lot of people have been calling me all kinds of names, mostly an animal, and I wouldn't want them to call me an animal. <laughs> I've been trying to be something more than an animal. Gotcha. Uh, so I, I like I like the they were calling me minefield. 
uh, which is explosion, uh, a weapon. I took it as, so I, I just pretty much coined it and said, all right, well, I'll just call it atomic because I can't call myself a minefield because uh, that means people let, step on those and they literally die. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. I, I I went with a I went with atomic something like Dragon Ball Z Super. <laughs> yeah, or like a you know like in the Fallout games you know with the atomic uh, like the nuclear war. I like it. Yeah, about, yeah. Honestly, I think so. minefield minefield would have been good because I mean you know if if they were gonna step on you you know you're gonna blow up and you know obviously they don't want that. Uh, but uh, yeah, but, yeah, clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very clever. And looking at this year, you know, 2021, February 27th, um, how many fights do you want to have this year? You said what now? Oh, how many fights would you like to have uh, in 2021? Oh, I'd like to have about four. Uh, if I can squeeze in a fifth, then I'll go with that one. But I like to have a lot. I like to be super active and getting in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you squeeze in five, you know, uh, you might uh, break uh, Kevin Holland's record of five, a five and zero in seven months. That'd be super cool. Right, that's a that's a, uh, a goal because you know he's in Florida, so I would like to go for that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, win all of them. <laughs> yeah, what can you say about Kevin Holland's uh, rise to stardom in twenty uh, twenty? Oh man, you know I'm I'm happy for him. I'm I'm happy that he's striving and uh you know doing well. And uh 2020 man, he, he's he's pretty much he did his thing, man. So that's pretty good for him. I'm happy for him and his family. And uh yeah, all, all the best for him. Mm -hmm. Great to hear. And obviously, you know, talking to a light heavyweight, I gotta have your uh thoughts on Adesanya moving up to 205 to challenge uh, John Blahovic for the light heavyweight title. Um, you know, obviously they passed up Glover Teixeira, who I think I think he was, you know, deserving of a title shot. So uh, but obviously UFC is a business, you know, it's their marketing strategy. Uh, what can you say about the UFC's decision to have Adesanya fight uh, the champ? I think it's fun, you know. Um... And I, I support that decision. Um, you know, I know Glover to share has been in there for a long time. And uh, I give it up to him, man. He's past 40, and he's he's working it. I'm a fan of Glover to share for sure. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited about that, that uh, matchup. And uh, I wish the best for that one. And I can't wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And with John Jones leaving the light heavyweights, you know, I think he posted a picture like he's at 250 pounds right now. Uh, do you think he'll ever come back to light heavyweight, or do you think he's done with his legacy uh, down there? No, no, no. Definitely, if he wants to come back to a fight, he he would or will. Just lose the uh, the water in his muscles, and uh, he'll be uh, 205 for sure. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I think that's all the questions I have. I just want to thank you again for talking to me with uh, Low Kick MMA. Is there anything that you wanted to say to the fans out there watching? Ah, man, if you are watching, uh, I, I definitely look to put on a show and uh, just tune in February 27th on a fight night. Uh, I'll be fighting. So, yeah, thank you for the interview.